Hi, I'm Philia Stain and I'm the Safari Expert. And in this video, I'm gonna compare Canon's 5D Mark IV DSLR camera with a 100 to 400 millimeter two zoom lens with Canon's R6 mirrorless camera with a 100 to 500 millimeter RF lens. And I'm gonna do it here at Ndlova River Lodge's incredible underground hides. After a very early start, we arrived at Ndlova River Lodge ready for a morning of bird photography. We spent the first half of the day in the smaller Hussein underground hide, photographing a great variety of small and colorful birds, including golden-breasted buntings, blue waxbills, yellow-eyed canaries, and green-winged bitilias. So I've always wanted to compare Canon's two full-frame cameras, the 5D Mark IV DSLR and the R6 mirrorless camera. And I think this is the perfect place to do it at Ndlova River Lodge because it just gives us a chance to photograph the same birds and animals right throughout the day at a set distance. So it's very controlled conditions. And I think these two setups, the 5D Mark IV with the 100-402 and the R6 with the 100-500 RF are very, very popular wildlife options. Now I'm not going to focus too much on the specifications today of the cameras and um, this is certainly not an in-depth video on the R6. You can go and watch other YouTube videos to see that. What I'm interested in is to see how do our photographs compare. And when I say ours, today I've got my friend Jürgen Sportgitter with me. The mirrorless setup is his and I'm going to be using my trusty DSLR setup. Now Jürgen's is an accomplished photographer so I feel confident that whatever photographs we are able to get today I can compare with each other. Now obviously these setups are going to have different pros and cons. The 5D Mark IV has got a larger sensor, so it's got about 10 megapixels more than the R6, which gives me a little bit more room to crop at the end. But of course the R6 has got that incredible animal eye tracking focus, which I think is going to work incredibly well with the birds here today. Remember when you're photographing over such a short distance, it's only six meters to the edge of the water those depth of fields are incredibly shallow. And that means with my setup, there's a big chance that I focus on a wax bull's beak instead of his eyes. So I'm very curious to see exactly what Jürgens is able to do when he uses the R6. He's also got that incredibly fast frame rate, up to 20 frames a second silently when he uses the electronic shutter. So very curious to see whether it's easier for him to take those takeoff shots than it's gonna be for me. When it comes to the lenses specifically, he's got an extra 100 millimeters on that 100 to 500 RF lens. But remember, at the maximum, it's not quite as wide open. The minimum F value is F7.1 versus the 5.6 that I've got on the 100 to 400. So again, interesting to see how those photographs are going to compare. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get cracking. It quickly became obvious that the extra 100mm reach of the 100-500mm to RF lens was a big advantage here at the underground heights. Just look how much more of the frame Jürgens was able to fill with his lens compared to my 100-400mm. to And even at f7.1, the RF's minimum aperture at 500mm, the background still blurred beautifully because the background was so far behind the birds. Just remember that the 5D Mark IV sensor has nine more megapixels than the R6, so I could effectively crop into the same size as the R6 photos and get very similar shots without losing detail. I must say, I'm very impressed with the 100-500mm RF lens and I'll talk a bit more about its sharpness later in the video. By the way, I'll place links to all the equipment I'm talking about in this video in the description below, including one to Outdoor Photo in Pretoria, where you can rent any of these items for your next photographic safari or simply to test it yourself. Let's talk a little bit about autofocus and frame rates. The Canon R6 has Canon's amazing animal eye tracking autofocus system, which the 5D Mark IV doesn't have. And when it comes to shooting in RAW like we do, the 5D Mark IV only shoots up to 7 frames per second and the R6 up to a whopping 20 frames per second if you use the silent electronic shutter. So I've got such a big disadvantage with the slow frame rate of the 5D Mark IV that I've decided to add my remote shutter release because that'll give me a chance to kind of compose the image, lock it on the gimbal head and then look at the bird very carefully from here and hopefully get it when it takes off. 
while Jürgens is firing away at 20 frames a second in the background without making any sound. Let's just say the results were not ideal. Oh. <laughs> That's the weirdest feeling. Jürgens gave me the R6 just to hold for a while just so I could feel how it feels and the Cape Turtle Dove came in. And this is the first time that I've ever used this camera and that eye tracking focus, which is amazing by the way. But as it took off, it felt like I wasn't taking any photos because I'm not hearing anything because of that silent electronic shutter. It's the weirdest feeling in the world. But uh, yeah, let's see whether I actually got something. Ha! Ha ha! Nailed it! Nailed it! Check this! Oh, this thing is amazing. Shooting at 20 frames per second at my fastest shutter speed of 1 over 8000, I was able to get that perfect takeoff shot that I so often miss with a much slower frame rate of the 5D Mark IV. And Jürgens was able to capture shots like these right throughout the morning, not only of birds taking off, but also of bathing birds jumping around. Just remember though, there's no guarantee that you'll get the money shots even if you're shooting at 20 frames a second. Oh. The problem is that even though you've got 20 frames a second, if your reflexes aren't fast enough to get them when they take off, you miss the shot. So I've switched over to the mechanical shutter now and you can hear it. It's much, much quieter than the mirror of a DSLR, um, but it's a little bit slower. It's 12 frames a second now. Still about double that I'm getting with a 5D Mark IV. See whether I can get something. Personally, I preferred shooting with the R6's mechanical shutter at 12 frames a second because I can actually hear when I'm taking the photos and it's still photographing at nearly double the frame rate of the 5D Mark IV. The danger of shooting at 20 frames a second with the silent electronic shutter of the R6 is taking way too many photos. To give you an idea, Jürgens took a total of 5,954 photos that day, while I only took 1,636. That's nearly four times as many as me. And even though the 5D Mark IV's RAW files are a bit larger at around 36 megabytes per image than the 28 odd of the R6 files, Jürgens used a mind-blowing 159 gigabyte of hard drive space where I used only 62. So not only do the high frame rates of the R6 force you to have bigger memory cards and more hard drive space, but you also have so many more images to work through afterwards, which experience has taught me is not easy. Let's chat a little bit more about autofocus. I've always been very impressed with the Canon 5D Mark IV's autofocus capabilities. It locks onto your subject easily and tends to keep that focus well if there's nothing in the foreground that could steal the focus. If, however, there's something like grass in front of the animal or the bird, the focus annoyingly sometimes jumps to it instead of staying on the animal. And that's where the R6's eye tracking autofocus comes in very handy. It would pick up even the tiny eyes of these little blue wax bills. And when it lost the eyes, it would immediately jump to the whole bird before picking up the eyes again. One challenge when you're photographing multiple birds at such a close range with the aperture wide open is the fact that the depth of field is so shallow, often only a couple of centimeters wide, that only one of the bird's heads will be in focus. And thus, when you use the R6, you may have to use a single focus point and normal autofocus first to select a specific individual before switching over to the eye tracking autofocus. When it comes to image quality, both the DSLR and mirrorless setups impressed me. One of the strongest points of the Canon 100-400mm Mark II is that it produces some of the sharpest images for a zoom lens in its class, and on this day, it was no different. I was, however, very eager to see how the 100 to 500 mm RF lens performed, and I'm happy to say I was very impressed with its sharpness, at least in these sunny conditions. Both of these lenses will struggle a little bit in low light because of the relatively large minimum F values when zoomed in all the way. On the camera side of things, I was eager to compare noise, or rather, the lack thereof. With my 5D Mark IV, I definitely start seeing noise at ISO 3200. It's not bad at all, especially when you look at the whole image, but as soon as you zoom in, it starts becoming a bit more obvious. On the R6, there's virtually no noise at ISO 3200. 
But I suppose that's what we would expect from Canon and a full frame camera that was released nearly four years after the 5D Mark IV. I talk more about the importance of ISO and many other camera settings in my best-selling online course called Wildlife Photography for Beginners and Amateurs. And I've added a link to it in the description below if you'd like to check it out. After a quick midday break, we headed to the larger Tapama Height for an afternoon session where we had the ultimate wildlife photography challenge, trying to photograph swallows drinking on the wing. Different species were zooming past us at lightning speed, dipping their beaks in the water for only a split second every time they came past. Not even the R6 and its amazing eye tracking autofocus system could lock onto the birds quick enough. So the only way to give ourselves an outside chance of getting anything half decent was to pre-focus on the water where we expected them to drink, switch over to manual focus and then just hope for the best. However, I quickly realized that holding the camera still on that one spot and taking photos when they flew by hardly ever worked. The birds were either out of focus or out of frame or more often than not, both. So while still pre-focused on a specific distance away from me, I started following the birds in flight but without doing so through the viewfinder. Instead, I kept my eye right above the camera and followed them over the lens, feeling a bit like a fighter pilot gunning down the enemy. On the R6 with a silent electronic shutter, it looked more like I was testing the arc of the gimbal support systems we were using. Oh yes, got it, got it, got it. Awesome, man. After hundreds of attempts, I finally got the shot. I was able to freeze the swallow at exactly the moment it flew into my depth of field while maintaining a strong composition. I also managed to get one other shot that was perfectly in focus and this one had the reflection in as well. Jurgens had slightly less luck than me with the swallows, but if you ask me, this was not because of the camera setup or his skills, but rather because of bad luck. He did however capture this amazing series of photos of a little bee eater taking a bath. So in conclusion, I love the Canon 100-500mm RF lens because of that extra 100mm reach and its sharpness that is as good as the trusty Canon 100-400 Mark II. Although it'll take some time for me to get used to the electronic viewfinder, I love the R6's eye tracking autofocus and there's no denying that shooting at 20 frames per second will give you a better chance to get more money shots when you're photographing action. I do however worry about all the memory card and hard drive space it needs for this and going through so many thousands of photos makes an already tough job even harder. Unfortunately, we weren't able to test the dynamic range of the two cameras at Indlova River Lodge, but I was extremely impressed with the lack of noise of the R6 at ISO 3200. And thus, when I take everything into consideration, I would say that you can safely go for the Canon R6 mirrorless camera with a 100-500mm RF lens over the Canon 5D Mark IV DSLR with a 100-400mm Mark II lens if you're looking for a flexible full-frame camera setup for wildlife. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support the channel, go and check out my Buy Me A Coffee page in the description below. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments below what photographic gear you'd like me to review next. Also take a moment to check out some of my other videos.